Today on Grim 3D, some more Design Spark Mechanical. Sketching. Stay tuned. As you can see right here, I've got Design Spark Mechanical start page. This start page comes up anytime that you open up Design Spark Mechanical. So it's just one of those things where they go ahead and advertise, you know, their new stuff. Speaking of new stuff, Design Spark Mechanical version 5.0 is out, and that is the version that I'm using right now. Go ahead and download it. It looks pretty good. I haven't had any problems with it yet. So it's just as functional as any of the other DS mechanical stuff. Today, we are going to look at sketching functions, how to control and use the sketching functions to create what you want in two dimensions, and then a quick tutorial on how to create three dimensions out of that. Let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is remove this start page, and then I'm going to go to File and New and get myself a new design. You can also get the new design by hitting Control N on the keyboard. So whichever way you choose to do that, here I have my design plane. Notice that the Z is up. So if you are looking down at it in plan view, the Z would be corresponding with the Z axis on your printer. So whatever base you want to be on the print bed, that's what goes on this grid right here. All right, now, a little overview of the sketching tools. We're gonna to be talking about these ones up here. Uh, you'll notice that on the left here, all of these sketching tools are about designing or drawing items. And on the right over here, these are about modifying things that are already drawn. So let's get going. We'll just draw a simple rectangle. Now, if I want my view to not be sloping away from me, there's three different ways to put this in plan view that are pretty easy. There's a plan view button up here. You can click the Z access button in this navigation block down the lower left, or there's actually a plan view button down here in your little quick access drawing toolbar. So click either one of those and it'll put you looking straight down. So right now I would be looking, if I'm creating this for 3D printing, I would be looking down at my print bed. Now, to create a rectangle, go up here, select my rectangle tool, You'll notice over here, I can either define the rectangle from center if I turn this on, or the default is to define the rectangle from corner to corner. Doesn't matter bottom corner, right? Doesn't matter where you start, but from corner to corner. So let's go ahead and draw one out. I'm gonna draw out a rectangle like that. Now you'll notice that I have the rectangle kind of attached to my mouse here, and I can click. You'll notice that I have my dimensions here too. If I do not like these dimensions, I can actually then go ahead and type those in. And I can actually type those in before I click, it'll just take over. So if I want this to be exactly 25 millimeters by 20 millimeters, then that's how I would do that. Now, what if your measurements are in inches because you have like a ruler that you're using and you have to convert that to millimeters in Design Spark Mechanical because you want to stick with millimeters because what your printer does it's what your design software does, but the only measurements you have are in inches. Easy fix, easy solution. If I wanted to go ahead, let's say this was four inches, I could literally in here, I could just type in four inches and Design Spark Mechanical understand that and converts it to millimeters for me, okay? Not necessarily what I wanted, but it is possible to just type it in inches if you give it the IN indicator. Also, if I draw a rectangle and I know that I need it, Let's say that for some reason I need it four inches minus an inch and a half. Design Spark Mechanical can actually understand that too. If I type in four minus 1.5 inches, now it went ahead and actually converted that to millimeters for me after it did the math. Okay, so it's pretty sweet like that. These little input windows can really be used to help you out in the future. All right, so back where we were, let's do our 40 by 25. And of course, to scroll in and out, you can just use, I've got it set to my mouse wheel, or you can set it for whatever you want. Another thing to note over here in these tool options and properties is that you can actually turn on or off the snap to grid or snap to angle 
that you can get when playing with all kinds of shapes. So if I turn off the snap to grid, that means that I'm not drawing a rectangle based on the one millimeter grid that's here. So that's sometimes pretty useful. Now the same thing goes for circles. There's a couple of circle tools here and a polygon tool. So if I wanna draw a circle, I can actually draw a circle from the center out, or I can draw a circle by defining three points on the circle. Uh, so just messing with the center out one, I'm just going to pick a center point and then draw it out for however big I want the circle to be. So this would be an eight millimeter circle. Yes, once again, I can type in there if I want, but you'll also notice with snap to grid, it's not snapping to an even millimeter, it's snapping to the closest cross point of the millimeter by millimeter grid. So uh, if I end up over here, you'll notice I have uh, an 8.485 millimeter circle. So that's something to keep in mind. So if I throw down an eight millimeter circle, that's fine. I can actually change that after I've drawn it or while I'm drawing it is fine as well. If I use my select tool right here and grab the center of that, I can move it around and this also snaps to the grid. So I'm in one millimeter increments unless I go over here and turn off the snap to grid, in which case I'm free forming it. Now, another thing that's interesting about Design Spark Mechanical, let's say I drew another circle that is in line with that first circle. Notice that as I draw this circle out, it will actually tell me when I have it the same size as the other circle. So then if I want to do multiple circles that are the same size in the same drawing plane, see that? I can have multiple circles inside the same drawing plane that are the same size, uh, pretty much put them anywhere I want. Um, and it will tell me when they're exactly the same size. It will actually snap to that all by itself. So there's that. If I wanna create a, an ellipse, so here's my ellipse tool. Notice that I'm creating the ellipse uh, from the center out. So I'm going to come down straight from those other two circles and I create the ellipse width first and click to set that and then I can create the ellipse height uh, and click to set that. So there I have an oval that is exactly the dimensions I expected or wanted it to be. That's pretty convenient. How about the polygon tool? Now the polygon tool can create a polygon with any number of sides it defaults to six sides. What I'm gonna to wanna to do is draw it from the center out and then without clicking, I find that this is the easiest way for me to do this, without clicking, I can hit the tab and I can adjust how many sides there are. So if I want a triangle, I can put three sides. If I want a square, which I don't know why I wouldn't use the square tool for that, but there's a square. If I wanted a pentagon, there's five sides, uh, then six we've already looked at. We can go seven and we can go eight. It doesn't really matter what you put in here. You can get a polygon of any number of sides and just click it to set it. And then if I need to with my select tool, I can then also move that around if it's not where I wanted it to be. All right. So another option with drawing tools which is kind of an interesting uh, part of the drawing tools is that I can, I, first of all, I know where anytime I mouse over a line, I know where the endpoints are, I know where the center point is. So if I wanted to, let's say mirror a drawing, I wanted the same on both sides, I would actually create what they call a construction line here. And then on this one, I would wanna go in the center, even though that's not the center of my grid, it is the center of my design. And then with this construction line, I can actually right click it and set it as a mirror line, which gives it a different dash format there. And then anything that I do to one side of the design is going to happen to the other side of the design. So if I really wanted to just take these corners off pretty quick and easy, I can mirror it straight across that line just about anything you do on one side or the other. Um, mirrors on both sides. 
So let's say I wanted to draw those two circles, but only bother to draw them once. I can actually draw that out and make it the same size as the other one, which I can see now because the other one's highlighted in green. And I just click and now I've mirrored both of those equidistance from the top and the sides of my design based on this center mirror line. So the mirror line is a pretty cool function. I can actually, let's mess with some modification uh, options now. Some of these over here on the right, modify or edit lines that we already have out. Uh, one of the ones that I use quite a bit is the trim away tool. So you'll notice that now as I mouse over particular segments, so it's not highlighting entire lines now, it's just highlighting particular segments. So I can actually remove lines one segment at a time. And since I still have my mirror line active, it removed those on both sides. Okay, now if I didn't have my mirror line active, let's say I wanna just remove them on one side, right click the mirror line and I can turn off the set as mirror line. All right, now if I go through with my trim tool that I'm still on right here, I can actually trim and it does not trim off the other side. So just another uh, feature to help you design and draw whatever it is that you wanna design or draw in two dimensions. Of course, when I'm done with this center line or mirror line or whatever, I can just right click and delete. I can just get rid of it. I can trim it away. I can do whatever I want with that. Now, other than the trimming tool, there is actually a pretty convenient uh, modification over here that creates a corner. I've used this one uh, quite a bit. It's created a rounded corner. And you can do this by clicking near a corner or on a corner. It doesn't really matter. But what it does is it starts to draw out different sizes of curves. And once you click that, it replaces the original lines with the curve. So if I wanted to, and notice it shows me once again, when it's equivalent to the curve that I just drew, and I can click, and so now I've got a nice even curve across that side. So that's the Create Curve tool. Uh, there's quite a few other tools here that we're not gonna go over right now. I have probably some different videos on that. Now, to shift a two-dimensional drawing to three-dimensional, I remember I'm looking down on this in plan view, so this is my print bed. If I was going to print an object like this, whether these were towers or whether they were cavities or holes, doesn't matter. What I would do now is I would actually go to my pull tool, or I can just go to 3D mode by clicking the 3D mode button right here. And now you'll notice that I've got my, I've got a single plane that's now a surface instead of outlines. Anywhere it finds solid outlines, it's gonna to try to turn that into a plane. So now what I can do is, let's say I want to raise this plane up, and once again, I can just type this in, three millimeters, and then these, I can either delete them, I can just click that, so now I've got a hole right there, or I can actually bring these up, let's say five millimeters, and I could also pull, let's say this one up, 15 millimeters, really whatever I want to do with the pull or the push to make these, to make this into whatever type of shape that I want it to be for whatever project I'm trying to print. So there you have it, it's 2D sketching, sketch tools, kind of a rundown, try it out. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. I'm more than willing to answer. I've been responding to all of my comments these days. It's not really that big a deal. So if you have questions about the whole 2D drawing and turning it into a three-dimensional three object, then let me know. Just remember, if you want to comment, keep it civil. Go ahead and smash that like button and ring that bell. Last thing I'm going to say is I've noticed that probably 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed. So if you're using my content and you're liking what I'm doing and you want to keep it going, please subscribe. I would really love to get this channel to a position where it can be monetized. So I need everybody's help with that. Thank you very much. Subscribe down below. We'll see you out there.